Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and God has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give you, give thanks to you. You are my God and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good and the Lord's steadfast love endures forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The message today is a reason to wait. As I shared at the beginning, um, my computer may freeze up. Um, if it does, I will pause until it comes back. So hopefully we can get through. Without that, I ask your prayers. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this preaching moment. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. What would you say if Jesus appeared right here on this screen right now? I have a suggestion for you. You could say, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven, Hosanna in the highest. Now I know that was the furthest thing from your mind about what to say to Jesus if he showed up right here on this screen right now. Or is it? Think about it, it's been three and a half weeks since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. Two weeks since those of us in Illinois um, have experienced shelter in place called by Governor Pritzker. Eight days since Mayor Lightfoot ordered the lake front and the parks and playgrounds and basketball courts closed. And your number of days since you felt anxiety, fear, concern, isolation and loneliness, very serious concern for a loved one or a neighbor or friend, and with this very real, very current, jarring shift to our lives, I want to suggest to you that if Jesus showed up right now, right here on this screen, that this is exactly the appropriate response. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven, Hosanna in the highest. And no, I do not suggest this simply because it's Palm Sunday. Go with me to the text. In our scripture today, Jesus is entering Jerusalem and the people welcome him with their best triumphal entry. The people were familiar with triumphal entries in the city, kind of like Hyde Park knew in recent past, in the recent past, that when they saw blocked streets and police escorts and lots of limousines, it meant that the president, that is President Obama, was in town and would soon be riding down the street. It's the same type of deal in our text today as Jesus is making his entry into Jerusalem. This type of procession was typical for Roman emperors, for military leaders, but this is Jesus making a statement about the rule of God while also being prophetic, riding in on a donkey as prophesied to Israel in the Old Testament, Zechariah 9, 9. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. He didn't come in on a war horse, 
as some would want a king to do, and as the emperor would have come, he's being prophetic and countercultural, and he's creating quite, quite a stir. And the people are coming out on the streets, and when Jesus arrives to the procession, they shout, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And I suggest to you that this is the response, the appropriate response, then and now. For Hosanna is the original Aramaic. It literally means, Lord, save us. It is a cry for deliverance, and it is also simultaneously a song of praise because the cry for deliverance is being made to one who they knew was able to deliver. Have you ever had a cry for deliverance and a song of praise going on within you at the same time? As Jesus enters Jerusalem, the people welcome him with their triumphal entry because they know what God promised through the prophet Isaiah and through the Holy Scriptures that one would come through the lineage of David who would be anointed by God's spirit, that one would come and be on the side of the poor and the oppressed, that one would come to right the wrongs of society, that one would come and speak truth to power, that one would come and overturn oppressive rulers and governments. And they are in need of just that. They are in need of one who can save them from the oppressive political rulers, in need of one who can feed the hungry and clothe the naked, in need of one who can heal their diseases, in need of one who can soothe and heal their souls and deliver them from all evil. And for this, they cry out, Hosanna, meaning, Lord, save us. They cry out Hosanna for deliverance and simultaneously they cry out in praise for they've seen and heard Jesus or stories about Jesus. They've seen and heard about the healing of the sick, cleansing of lepers, healing of the woman with the issue of blood, healing of the paralytic at the pool of Bethesda. They've experienced or heard about the wonderful Sermon on the Mount the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 and they've heard all the wonderful things Jesus has done and for this they give him praise Hosanna to the son of David blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord it's that simultaneous cry for deliverance and a song of praise and it was appropriate then and it has never been for our generation more appropriate than now for in this season of Lent 2020, ironically coinciding with COVID-19 pandemic, what I know for sure is that we have a reason to cry for help. For there's a virus infecting people all over the land. Many people are sick and many people are dying. And yes, most people are recovering from COVID, thank God. But I haven't seen more death announcements from people in my six degrees of separation ever before, and I hope never again. People have lost loved ones, people have lost jobs, businesses are closing, many will not reopen, churches are closing, some never to reopen. And I don't have to spend much time convincing you that we're all in a moment where a cry for deliverance is an appropriate cry. And so if Jesus showed up right now, right here on this Zoom broadcast, the right thing to say would be, Hosanna, save us. Right here in this moment of our lives, like never before, there's a serious concern about the immediate and lasting impact of this pandemic. But I know I'm not the only one who is experiencing this strange cognitive dissonance on a daily basis. In one moment, I feel a cry for help welling up in my spirit. And in the next moment, I'm grateful for waking up each morning. And for this, I cry, Hosanna. In one moment, we feel a cry for help after hearing of the death of wonderful legends musical legends such as Ellis Marcellus and Bill Withers, and for that, my heart aches. And the next moment, we're grateful and praising God for friendships and relationships that are growing deeper, mending, 
or just getting the attention they deserve all because of this divine delay. And for this, please cry out with me, Hosanna. In one moment, we feel that cry for help as we hear of the suffering of people who cannot properly mourn their loved ones because a funeral cannot be held. People are going without pastoral care, sometimes because they do not have a pastor or a faith leader, whatever their faith tradition. They've been out of church and they don't have a covering and they did not see this coming. And simultaneously, we learn that the environment is benefiting from the reduced carbon footprint due to the drastic reduction of emissions from the reductions of industrial activity and vehicular traffic, fewer planes, trains, and automobiles. And the animals on land, in the air, and in the sea seem to be benefiting from the immediate and drastic reduction in pollution. And for this, on behalf of creation, let us all cry out, Hosanna. And then there's our own personal reasons for crying out Hosanna. A sense of simultaneous sadness and joy. Sad that the academic year took a turn, but grateful that the pressure from that same academic year has lessened. Sad that you cannot personally connect with loved ones, but grateful for technology that allows connection and grateful for more time to connect. Sad that income and employment is in jeopardy, but grateful for a chance to consider a shift that might really make your heart glad. This Palm Sunday, like no other in our lifetime, we have a reason to wave our palms and sing Hosanna to the highest, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So when you feel grief, in the coming weeks, wave your palm and cry out Hosanna. When you feel joy in the coming weeks, maybe even simultaneous grief and joy, don't squelch that joy. Don't feel guilty that you feel joyous. Just acknowledge it and say Hosanna in the highest. And for this is an acknowledgement that you are crying out to the one who is able, crying out to the one who keeps us from falling, crying out to the one who said he would never leave us nor forsake us, crying out to the one who the psalmist reminds us today, whose love endures forever. For when the people cried Hosanna, they were we're actually drawing from one of their favorite songs. We call them Psalms, but these were songs of their heritage. And we know it as Psalm 118, and they knew it well. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, and the Lord's steadfast love endures forever. And so as you pray this week, pray and then read verse 21 and say, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected, they're talking about Jesus, has become the chief cornerstone. And this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day. If you didn't know where that came from, it comes from Psalm 118. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And this is where they get Hosanna from, verse 25. Save us. That's Hosanna. We beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Verse 27 says, the Lord is God and the Lord has given us light. Bind the festival, the festal procession with branches. That's where they get that from. Wave your palms up to the horns of the altar. And what's our reason and our ongoing reason for waving our palms to acknowledge simultaneous sadness and joy, simultaneous concern and gratitude. Because verse 28 says, you are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks 
to the Lord this Palm Sunday. For the Lord is good. The Lord's steadfast love endures forever. Amen. God bless you.